Hi, this is Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about connective tissue. We want to learn how connective tissue is classified, uh, the composition of extracellular matrix, how to recognize extracellular matrix components, whether fibers or, or matrix, uh, and then uh, we want to learn the function of the connective tissue cells and how to recognize uh, the vast number of connective tissue cells. Thank you. Now the body is divided into four basic types of tissue. Epithelium we've already covered. Uh, connective tissue is one of those we're covering today. Bone is connective tissue. Um, dermis is connective tissue. Fat is connective tissue. Uh, uh, connective tissue around muscle uh, that, that we can see there is connective tissue. There's muscle and nervous tissue as well. Now, if we look at nerve, we can see there's three layers of connective tissue because that's what connective tissue does. It's a histologic glue, binds things together. In the nerve, we have uh, the endoneurium, the perineurium, and the epineurium. Uh, it's similar to, the, to that in muscle. Connective tissue around the outside is epimysium. Perimesium, endomesium is where you have individual cells connect, uh, touching connective tissue. So connective tissue connects, con connects to various other cells of the body. They even connect connective tissue. So the function of connective tissue is a mechanical support. It's a stroma below uh, the epithelium. It's a skeleton. So this is the epithelium, which is the epidermis. And then this is the dermis, the dermis below, which harbors blood vessels and all uh, for uh, nutrients as well as mechanical support. In fact, that's the vascular beds for the metabolic exchange to occur. Uh, epithelium has no blood vessels, uh, so it has to get it from the connective tissue below. Fat cells, fat cells, adipocytes, uh, are storage of energy source, and we see those uh, lots of fat cells in there. Inflammatory response, this is the site of the action for his plasma cells or other immune cells uh, to combat pathogens is in the connective tissue. Fibrosis, and so fiber healing uh, over, uh, wound healing overproduction is fibrosis, uh, but you have the uh, uh, Minimal fibrosis is associated with uh, healing of uh, repairing uh, the tissue. So in, in terms of distinguishing features, loose connective tissue uh, is uh, a sparse collagen fibers as fibers uh, and lots of cells. So loose is lots of cells where dense is lots of fibers, few cells, uh, because uh, the important part about a connective tissue, uh, in addition to the cells, is the extracellular matrix. Collagen all is outside extracellular matrix. Uh, <clears throat> cartilage uh, is a vascular type of connective tissue, but it also is connective tissue. Here we see cartilage uh, here, epithelium there, there's the uh, dermis below, and then bone. Here we see uh, cartilage on the end of bone, and there's a bone that the kid is sucking on, and uh, bone is connective tissue as well. Uh, the uh, calcium that's in there has is calcified uh, the collagen material that we have. So here we see bone and cartilage are still part of uh, connective tissue fits uh, in that category, as we can see. Now, it's a mechanical uh, support, so this is the uh, dermis, which interacts with the epidermis. So these are dermal papillae and reedy pegs that are coming in, and it provides mechanical support for the epithelium, which is the epidermis, and this is a dermis or the connective tissue. Also, metabolic exchange, uh, vascular beds come in through there with capillaries in through there. So as you go here, you have high osmotic pressure, a hydrostatic pressure, and low osmotic pressure, uh, and then that exchanges over here as the fluid comes out, proteins reside in there, 
and that pulls the fluid right back into there. Uh, and so this is a vascular bed that's below the epithelium, and that's what connective tissue does. So in through here will be the, connect, uh, uh, the blood vessels that will be feeding epithelium on the surface. Also for energy storage, we have fats. These are fat cells, and you can see fat cells are like uh, uh, chicken wire, as you can see. Uh, this is collagen in through there, but this is loose connective tissue because it has lots of cells. For the inflammatory uh, response, uh, you, you have the battleground. This is a battleground for the immune cells to react uh, to, to make antibodies, uh, to be produced, uh, transferred to the lumen. Uh, and so uh, the connective tissue is the site of the action of the immune cells in addition to uh, connective tissue supplying um, uh, a dendermal papillae with uh, blood vessels uh, for to, nourish, to provide nourishment for the uh, in the, for the epithelial cells on the surface. And so wound healing, uh, and here we see wound healing associated with it. Uh, fibrosis is too much, too thick of a connective tissue uh, repair. But here you see 60 hours after wounding, uh, there's a rich vascular supply uh, associated with connective tissue to uh, replace the tissue. Now, connective tissue is uh, composed of different things. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, connective tissue proper, which is loose and dense. Dense could be regular, could be irregular. Uh, and then next time, we're going to talk about cartilage and bone. So uh, all uh, connective tissue comes from the mesoderm, from in the middle that we see in through there, uh, and it's derived from the bone marrow. So in the bone marrow, the various cells that are there, here we see bone marrow, that pink there is bone on the outside. Now, uh, as I mentioned to you, classify a connective tissue proper as loose, mostly cells dense, uh, mostly extracellular matrix, which is collagen. So here we can see the dense uh, matrix with few cells as opposed to here we have lots of cells. These are the fat cells, the chicken wire cells again. So dense is more fibers and less cells uh, at that we see. Uh, <clears throat> also, the arrangement of fibers are important. If they're irregular, like in a capsule, a capsule uh, that surrounds the organ would be irregular because it has to withstand pressure from different directions. However, a regular one would be in a tendon or a ligament uh, where uh, the stress is pulled in one, in one direction. So uh, we also have other cells <coughs> that are wandering or fixed. Uh, and here we see a mast cell that's fixed. These are macrophages here, here, and here. Uh, and they are, uh, are fixed in this case, but macrophages also can move around. Like the one in the lungs uh, can be moving around because they're in the air spaces themselves. Now, in terms of extracellular matrix, uh, the main one is collagen, and the main type is type 1. Their general organization is flexible, has high tensile strength, is strong, uh, it doesn't stretch. Uh, and so if you have a tendon or a ligament, uh, it would not be good if it stretched. Uh, it would not be able to do work. Also, it resists collagenase digestion. And the collagenase will be, bacteria would have collagenase. To, also, it has periodicity. So this is a, one uh, collagen fibril. Here's another one. Here, here, collagen fibril. Uh, and then uh, here we see a fibroblast, there's a nucleus and lots of rough in the plasma reticulum because it's making collagen, which is protein. So the synthesis of collagen is the fibroblast. Uh, and so a fibroblast, here we see one of those fibroblasts, uh, and uh, it would be useful <coughs> for us to look at, you see proline and lysine are two amino acids that are incorporated in collagen. And so what happens is, uh, Proline lysine enters the cell. Uh, the messenger RNA uh, is produced inside the nucleus, and uh, that causes synthesis uh, 
uh, of these um, using these amino acids to make uh, collagen protein inside the rough enterprise reticulum. It then buds off, goes into the Golgi where it gets its sulfur and sugars, uh, and then it's exocytose. So it's exocytose as pro-collagen. It's not collagen yet, pro-collagen. And then it's too long and it needs to be clipped off. So outside the cell, you have pro-collagen peptidases, which cut off the pro-collagen to make tropocollagen. And so the tropocollagen then uh, is kind of staggered in through there to assemble to make uh, the collagen. Uh, and so you have a, both intracellular component and an extracellular component where you actually have the symbol it outside. So you clip it, assemble it on the outside of the cells. Remember the pulse chase experiment and the temporal appearance uh, of things, uh, a similar type of thing. So if you were gonna look at proteins, uh, just uh, like in the pancreas cell, you might use uh, radioactive general amino acids. Uh, if you're gonna do DNA, trimidine thymidine, RNA, uridine. But if you're going to use, look at collagen production, you use proline and lysine, uh, which are amino acids that are, are in there, and we'll see here in a minute. So proline uh, is repeated in collagen to make it turn. So you have three different units, and they're turning like this, and it's the proline uh, that allows it to turn to make the three strands. Lysine uh, is cross-linked strands. So it cross-links the strands uh, to keep them together. And then glycine uh, has no, no, no side chain, is good for uh, the, uh, packing the backbone uh, and fix in a crowded space is what, it, is what it does. So you can see how the different units come together to make uh, uh, to to make the uh, collagen uh, fibril, uh, and that produces a periodicity that we see. Here we see proline, uh, where it uh, allow it to turn. So as you get these, uh, it it turns a protein, uh, lysine, um, uh, and then for linking, and then glycine kind of fit into in the holes in between. So those three uh, uh, amino acids are incorporated in there. Uh, and whenever polymerization occurs outside the cell, you get periodicity. And so as these different units overlap one another, they create a 64 nanometer uh, periodicity that, that we can see and it's due to the uh, tropocollagen, remember, which is pro-collagen already clipped. Uh, whenever it comes to be assembled here, uh, then that's what makes uh, the fibril. Uh, the, uh, so it's collagen fibril, and you make more than one to make a collagen fiber, and then you get a bundle. And that's one characteristic about collagen is it varies uh, in the size. You get some thin ones and some thick ones as well. Uh, and so there's different types of collagen. Type 1 is the main one that we've uh, talked about with the fiber forming, periodicity, and varied uh, in, uh, in size. There's also a type 2. Uh, it's fiber forming 2. It's in hyaline cartilage, uh, vitreous body of the eye. And then there's type 3, which is a reticular fiber, and that's branched. So here we see type 1, the varying sizes, type 1. Uh, but uh, it, it's branching and it's good for a lymphoidal tissue. Type 4 uh, is uh, in the basal lamina. Uh, so uh, type 3 would be the reticular fibers that are, that are branched. And so uh, in the lymphoidal tissue, here we can see in the spleen, uh, the blood uh, uh, lumen of the blood vessels are not, doesn't have uh, the fibers, but you do have the reticular fibers elsewhere. This is in the adrenal, where you have support with the reticular fibers. Here again, with the spleen, you can see the strands, uh, the splenic strands coming through there, which have reticular fibers uh, seen by this darkness. You see the fiber, the individual fibers here. 
but no fibers in the blood vessels. Uh, the basal lamina is actually type 4 collagen. Uh, and type 5 collagen you have uh, in, in blood vessels. So here we see a blood vessel right in through there. There's another blood vessel. See the endothelial cells. And you see that they too have a basal membrane, just like these other cells. And it's in the base, not in the apex. Okay. And then there's a, uh, another external matrix is elastin. And that allows it to stretch and to relax back to its, uh, its original shape. The aorta is one of those. And we can see the elastic fibers here. Uh, actually, they're lamina, more like bed sheets, elastic lamina <coughs> uh, that are that are there uh, in the uh, muscle layer. This is the media and the adventitia, intima media and adventitia. And the adventitia, of course, is connective tissue as well as connective tissue uh, in the in the intima, uh, in the muscular arteries. Uh, here we see elastic fibers again, elastic fibers to help recall uh, the, uh, and here's a blood vessel, and we can see the elastic of fiber in it at the electron microscopic level. So proteoglycans have hyaluronic acid, glycans, and fibronectin is a, is a biological glue uh, that binds cells to the extracellular matrix. That's what we're going to see in the next couple of slides. So uh, you have a hyaluronic acid core, and then you have protein cores come up from that, and then you have cochroidin sulfate, uh, um, different sulfates that are coming off of, of those. So this is a kind of a structure that you have, hyaluronic acid core, glycosaminoglycans uh, coming off of there. Type 2 collagen has periodicity, but it's not as obvious as it is in type 1. Um, and, and here you can see where you, how you have hyaluronic acid and then you have the concurrent sulfates uh, coming through there, type 2 collagen coming off of there, uh, a, a tangent, uh where it's attached to it. And then uh, uh, here we can see the mesh, so these to be type 1 collagen, and then the ground substance, which is proteoglycans, protein core, and hyaluronic acid that's in there. In terms of fibronectin, if this is a cell, this is a cytoplasm, there's a cell membrane, it has a fibronectin binding, a fibronectin receptor, uh, and so the fibronectin molecule uh, binds, binds to that, binds the cell to the extracellular matrix, um, and it has junction between adjacent cells. Remember, we talked about major junctions, but there are also, here's fibronectin receptors, collagen receptor, laminin receptor, these are proteins in the cell membrane that interact with the extracellular uh, matrix, as you can see. So here we see the fibronectin molecule that binds to a fibronectin receptor, uh, as well as other uh, type 4 collagen molecule, different um, types of collagen that we have. And so the uh, glycosaminoglycans, hyaluronic acid, congruent sulfate, congruent 6-sulfate, uh, dentine sulfate, heparin sulfate, uh, keratin sulfate, uh, and you can see where they're distributed, what, where it's in the cornea of the eye, it's in the cartilage, or where, uh, and then uh, basically uh, what what it it does uh, in these in these locations, or uh, have have high levels of interaction mainly with uh, type two collagen in these locations. So here again. Hyaluronic acid core, and then you you have protein cores with uh, congruent sulfates on there. So these are located on the side chains of the uh, core protein. Now there are different cells in connective tissue. The main cell is a fibroblast, and the fibroblast uh, we call fibroblast fibrocyte the same thing. Uh, it uh, it's the one that secretes the extracellular matrix. And then you have mesenchymal cells, those are stem cells. They look like fibroblasts, we can't tell the difference, but they're pluripotent, they can make a bunch of different cells. Uh, adipose cells, storage of energy, macrophages is part of the monocyte lineage. There's fixed and wandering ones. Plasma cells uh, come from B lymphocytes and the antibodies. Mast cells uh, 
associated with an allergic response, and others, lymphocytes, eosinophils. Here we see the mast cell, macrophage, a fibroblast. Uh, you can see the nuclei and a lot of extracellular matrix there. Fibroblasts here, again, nuclei, plasma cells, and fat cells. And then here you can see the blood cells, red blood cell, uh, a neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, monocyte. So these cells are connective tissue cells as well as well as a lymphocyte. So in the bone marrow, you have these pluripotent cells that can make a host of these other cells, including the megakaryocyte, including the osteoclast that eats up bone, wandering macrophages, make fixed macrophages. Uh, also, these cells make fibroblasts, fat cells, chondrocytes, chondroblasts, or vice versa, these are sites, these are blasts, uh, or the bone marrow sites that can make endothelial cells, it can make mesothelial cells. So these are a host of cells that come from uh, fibroblast, fibroblast looking cells that are in the bone marrow. And here we see fibroblasts, so this is one cell here. You can see collagen fibers in through there. And maybe uh, you see the secretion going on in through there, small amount of fibers, maybe undergoing exocytosis like we saw uh, here in the drawing. Now, this is the fibroblast, there's a the nucleus, and there's the cytoplasm, and this is the extracellular matrix. And the mesenchyma cell that's in the perichondrium and the periosteum that gives rise to uh, the chondroblast and the osteoblast. And so they're pluripotent cells. We can't tell them, but they're stem cells that are in there. So the fibroblast uh, can make different cells. Uh, uh, it can make uh, bone cells. Uh, it can make smooth muscle. And it can make fat cells as well as the other ones that we talked about. Here, smooth muscle is important. Uh, here we see fat, uh, lipid, in through there. These are white fat uh, deposits. So here we see a lipid droplet. This is a droplet inside a fat cell. And then this is a, is a capillary. So these are like these, these are capillaries, and these are like fat cells that we see. And you, you see the exchange between the two. You get hydrolysis of triglycerides uh, of the fat, and then that goes into the bloodstream. So you have fatty acids and, and glycerol that it goes in through there uh, and feeds the body and then if you have excess amount of those uh, then what happens is uh, the fat is stored in the fat cells and so that's where the fat cells so you have a, a storage mechanism or a release to uh, maintain uh, uh, the body condition whenever there uh, is a little food to be to be eaten now this is white fat and brown fat. White fat has a single unit. Brown fat has uh, multiple small uh, uh, fat globules inside. Here again, we can see brown fat with multiple little uh, uh, fat droplets in, as opposed to white fat, which has one major uh, droplet uh, inside there. Brown fat is what uh, keeps the bat warm, and here you can see this is a thermal um, detector and shows you that it's warmer here where the brown fat is than the rest of the fat. Here we have white, white fat. There's a cytoplasm associated with that. Mast cell, collagen bundles, another. So these are cells in the connective tissue. We also have uh, wandering and fixed macrophages. Uh, we have Kupfer cells. Uh, that are in the uh, in the liver. So these are macrophages. You can see heterophagic vacuoles being eaten and varying in intensities in the granules, which is characteristic of of uh, macrophage. Here we see macrophages and macrophages in bone marrow. Macrophages all over the body. So here we can see the macrophage lineage making a monocyte in the blood and then it goes to the organs. Uh, and so 
And here's a monocyte in blood, and here, uh, Kupfer cells uh, in the liver. And here in the airway, we have the alveolar uh, macrophages in the lungs. So here we see one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And then there's also macrophages in the lymph node. So we see there's one macrophage there, another one there, another one there, and they picked up this carbon. So a connective tissue, histiocytes, liver, Kupfer cells, alveolar uh, macrophages in the lungs, lymph node, free and fixed macrophages. Uh, there's also in the spleen uh, and in the bone marrow, there's fixed macrophages in there as well. Um, the macrophages in a normal state, uh, here we can see them in the pleural cavity. Well, we can't see them, but that's where they are. Also, the bone osteoclast. Uh, and here we see osteoclast that's actually eating up cartilage and bone. So the macrophage monocytes make uh, this is another type of macrophage type cell. Uh, in the central nervous system, there's macrophages inside there. In the skin, there's tattoo. So which of these are the real tattoo? Is this a tattoo or is that a tattoo? Actually, both are tattoos, I think. Synovial fluid has uh, macrophages inside there. Sometimes if you want to collect macrophages, you get the fluid uh, out, of the, out of the body cavity. Uh, <clears throat> can you read USN, USN here? And this is a tattoo after 52 years. Uh, and macrophage only lasts for 40 years. But how old were your macrophage whenever you got your tattoo? So what happens is uh, the tattoo loses its focus over time because uh, the macrophages are holding the ink of the tattoo. They die in 40 years. Other ones pick up that ink and they're not located in the same spot. And as a consequence, uh, you lose your focus with time. Uh, connective uh, tissue cells, macrophages uh, from the monocyte lineage. Macrophages interact with other cells. They produce uh, a host of mediators, uh, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, uh, that causes other cells uh, to react. Here we see interleukin-1 uh, uh, works with the bone marrow. It works with neutrophil activation, plasma cells being produced from B, T cells uh, affecting things in the brain, in the liver, um, uh, fibroblasts, osteoclasts, just a host of different cells uh, from uh, the, the, the macrophage uh, uh, cell that we can see. Here at the end again, you can see the various chem, uh, things it, it produces uh, and the different cells that react to it. So also the macrophage is an antigen presenting uh, cell. So it takes uh, debris, chops it up, and presents that to the other cells. Uh, here you see the T lymphocytes killing uh, a, a tumor cell or a virus infected cell, as you can see. Uh, plasma cells, so you have uh, B lymphocytes give rise to plasma cells, and here you can see a plasma cell, classical one with a cartwheel nucleus, big bunch of cytoplasm, as you see here too, and in that cytoplasm is rough in the plasma reticulum, but no secretory granules because this cell has a is a constitutive uh, secretor. If you, uh, it doesn't store it uh, in granules and then discharge. As soon as it produces, it discharges. Uh, and then the plasma cell, of course, interacts with the mast cell, and it gives a specificity for the mast cell. So the mast cell is going to uh, pick up the antibodies that are present, and then when it sees this antigen, it's going to cause it to degranulate. Uh, and so it degranulates, and then it makes more granules, and that's what it does. So whenever the antibodies interact with the antigen that's there, uh, a second messenger comes through, uh, calcium is in flux, and then exocytosis, histamine, heparin, and these things that make you itch. And then the mast cell will uh, produce more granules, 
uh, produce more granules, and it may even pick up different antibodies this time. So it may respond to yet a different stimulus. Uh, we have uh, mast cells. Here we see the mast cells here, eosinophil there, uh, other cells that we have. So fibroblasts, and you can see a lot of collagen bundles in between the nuclei here and a little bit of cytoplasm. Uh, plasma cells, uh, lymphocytes or lymphocytes here, eosinophil, uh, macrophage, uh, mast cell, adipose cell that we see, uh, the main product that they have and the main function of those, and I suspect it could be useful to know some of these. Form blood elements, uh, uh, red blood cells, uh, neutrophils, basophils, monocytes, and kind of what they do. Lymphocytes could be T or B, could be killer cells, could be, and, and then you can have platelets as well. And so here we see the different blood cells, the monocyte, basophil, eosinophil, neutrophil, uh, and, and then the bone marrow is a source of these. So cells are produced in the bone marrow, migrate out into the blood vessels, and then, and then they go through. Uh, if you go to this YouTube site right here, you'll be able to see explanation of the different cells for the red blood cells uh, and the white blood cell uh, formation that we see there. So in the mesenchymal cells, the fibroblast lichen cells, they can make endothelial cells, they can make smooth muscle cells, and they can make fibroblasts, all of those. So what's important? Uh, why is that important? That's important because that allows uh, the mesothelial cells to give rise to new blood vessels. And the blood vessels are composed of the intima, which would be the endothelial cells, the media, the muscle cells, and the admin tissue uh, with the fibroblast connective tissue. So in wound healing, you have uh, the, the mesoderm uh, and the, these uh, uh, mesothelial cells can make uh, the blood vessels, all the different components of the blood vessels. And here we can see uh, fibroblasts and bundles of, uh, there's, these are fibroblasts, uh, bundles of, of collagen in between these are smooth muscle cells, and we can see the interelastic lamina as well. These are endothelial cells that we see there. So in summary, uh, the fibroblasts can make a host of different cells, including all the cells needed for the blood vessels. Also, collagen is produced, uh, is assembled extracellular. There's an intracellular and an extracellular component. One of this, you cut off the the procollagen to make tropocollagen, and the tropocollagen is assembled on the outside, and of course, bone cells are really connective tissue. So in connective tissue, histologic glue binds them together, mechanical support, metabolic exchange, energy, information is what is what we have. These are the books from which I got illustrations from. I did not produce these. These came from uh, these books and we want to give those credit for them. Next time we're going to talk about the skeletal connective tissue. Either that we're going to go to the Great Salt Lake. This is uh, Salt Lake City right in through there and these are buffalo right through there that we can see. Uh, there is another lake up there and here's a petroglyph that we see and there's a sunset looking toward um, Toward the, toward the west uh, at the sunset. And then here we see at the ski lift, the, the jumping component of the ski uh, for the Olympics uh, were in Salt Lake City. Uh, and then there's just another, look how beautiful this thing is. Um, thank you.